Um, I want to say a little bit of why people care about determinants. Uh, we'll, we'll see some more applications in future lectures as well, but there's one short one we can mention right now. Um, determinants can be used to calculate area. So if we have two vectors, u and v, inside the plane, associated to any two vectors, we can form a parallelogram. This is what the parallelogram rule was about all before, right? Uh, with the parallelogram rule, if you put the two vectors, u and v, together so that their tails come together, the diagonal of this parallelogram was the sum of the two vectors. And then the other diagonal is the difference of the of the vectors. So this parallelogram, this geometric object is significant, significantly related to the algebraic properties of these vectors, additions and subtraction, right? Um, so what I wanna talk about now is actually the area of this parallelogram. It turns out that if we form the matrix A so that its first column is U and its second column is V, then the determinant of this matrix A uh, will equal the area of the parallelogram. Now, unfortunately though, it does depend on who comes first, U or V, there's an orientation issue. So if you choose them in the wrong order, you actually could get a negative number, which doesn't really make sense for area. But as you often see in like calculus and such, when you do integration, um, if, if you get a negative area, that's easy to fix. Just take the absolute value of that thing. And so the area of this parallelogram is equal to the absolute value of the determinant. Um, this is also true with respect to three by three matrices. Associated to the three columns of the matrix, there is a parallelopiped, which is like the three-dimensional analog of the parallelogram. The idea is you stack parallelograms. Oh, green's not going to work there. You, you can stack parallelograms on top of each other and make some type of like three-dimensional object. Uh, this is probably like the grossest picture anyone's ever drawn in their lives. But uh, you try to get like this three-dimensional uh, parallelogram. It's kind of like imagine if you had like a stack of cards and you were to pu you were to push it in a couple different directions. How does the card slant? Um, you have a parallelopiped. Um, a rectangular prism is a special type of parallelopiped when the angles are all right angles. Anyways, the volume of said parallelopiped will equal the determinant of the associated matrix. The columns of the matrix are the vectors that span the parallelopiped. But again, because of orientation reasons, you might have to take absolute values. And if we take higher dimensional analogs of this, uh, they hold as well. So if you take a four by four matrix, the, uh, the determinant of that matrix up to sign change is equal to the hyper volume of the hyper pipe parallelopiped, sort of like the four-dimensional analog. You can do five dimensions, six dimensions, et cetera. Um, the, reason, the reason I want to mention this is that in calculus, we actually use this principle a lot. Uh, when we do like change of variables in multivariable calculus, uh, we have to calculate the Jacobian, which is the determinant of a change of, it was a determinant of the derivative matrix. Uh, the partial derivative matrix there. And so why do why does the determinant show up in these integrals? Well, because the determinant is calculating area, right? And well, integrals calculate area. So it kind of makes sense that in order to calculate areas, you're going to use areas. And the determinant is keeping track of the change of area as you go from one variable to another or change the volume or higher dimensional analogs. And so determinants is how you calculate Int or is, is determinants are, is how you calculate linear area. Integrals is how you calculate non-linear area. And integrals, as you're taking limits of linear approximations, it's, it kind of suggests why the linear area formula, aka determinants, is showing up in those integrals. Um, so I want to do an example of this thing. So let's just take a two-dimensional example. Take a parallelogram. And so let's take the points negative 2, negative 2, 0, 3, 4, negative 1, and 6, 4. How do we calculate the area of that parallelogram using, uh, using determinants? So I'm going to graph it right here. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so we can see it a little, just a tiny bit better. Uh, and so let's do those points. So there's the point 2, 2, 2 negative 2, negative 2 right there. Um, there is the point 0, 3 
right here. Uh, there's the point four negative one right there. And then there's the point six comma four, which is this one right there. In which case, if we connect the dots, uh, you can see that we have in fact formed a parallelogram. Okay, uh, maybe it's not perfectly drawn, but that, that's the right idea. Now, in order to, uh, to use the rule we just did a moment ago, um, you have to have a parallelogram, uh, you have to have a parallelogram that goes through the, uh, the origin. So we actually want a point right here. And so what we can do is we can just perform an affine transformation uh, for which we're just gonna translate everything by a factor. So if we have this point uh, two, negative two, negative two, what we can do is we can actually just translate all the points so that negative two, negative two goes to the origin, right? Um, and so basically what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add, we're just gonna do the translation map, translate by, uh, by this factor two comma two. We're just gonna add two to all the coordinates. And so if we do that, we'll take two, two here, two, two here, uh, two, two here. Where do all my points go? Well, you're going to get the point zero, zero. Um, this point right here, which was, I'm going to label these things now. You get zero, three. It's going to, if we add points to it, it's going to become two comma five. I'm sorry, that's that's not that point. Uh, JK about that one. This was the point four, negative one. We get four, negative one. Uh, if we add 2, 2 to that, we're going to get 6, 1, which is this point right here, 6, 1. Um, if we do 3, 0, that's this one right here, 3, 0. Um, when you translate that one, that becomes 2, 5, which is this point right here, 2, comma 5. And then lastly, if we take the point uh, 6, 4, which is right there, um, when we translate that, that'll become the point eight comma six. And so this forms a parallelogram now. Let me try that again. I'll connect the dots one more time. We get a parallelogram. <coughs> and this parallelogram will be congruent to the original parallelogram. And what we're interested in is these two vectors right here. So this is the vector u and this is the vector v. So to find the area of this thing, we have to calculate the determinant of the first column of the vector u. Since it goes from 0, 0 to 2, 5, uh, the column will just be 2, 5, right? And then the second one, v, since it goes from 0, 0 to 6, 1, the second column will look like 6, 1, like so. And so if we calculate the determinant, we get 2 minus 30, uh, which gives us a negative 28. But as area should be positive, we really needed to take absolute values the whole way. And so we're going to get 28 square units of area uh, for this parallelogram right here. Now, admittedly, in order to calculate the area, we don't have to draw the picture. I mostly wanted to draw the picture to kind of illustrate geometrically what we're doing. Um, but this, de this determines is what we needed to do to calculate the area of this parallelogram. And that brings us to the end of our... Uh, a lecture today that concludes section 5.1 about uh, introduction to determinants. We'll talk some more about determinants, of course, throughout this chapter. We'll, 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 we'll talk about these more next time. Um, but thanks for having you here. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments below. I'll be glad to answer them uh, as soon as I can. If you like this video, please click the like button, subscribe. Um, if you want to see more videos like this or you want to get updates about future videos and other things related to this channel, um, and best of luck in your journey through linear algebra. I hope to see you next time. Uh, bye everyone.